That's, that's a big thing from a language perspective, isn't it? Lamb, because so, so so many, um, uh, you know, we have your pork and your beef and all these euphemisms to invisibilize the victim. But lamb, it's like, come on. <laughs> it's what it is, yeah. Exactly. It, show, it, show, it, sh it shows there's more than just the euphemisms to overcome, I think. Yeah, there's something so, deeper going on there. Hey fellow animal respecters, welcome to another video. For those of you who may have missed it, I recently did a live stream with Dan Shepard, who some of you may know from the TV series Veganville. The reason that I'm vegan now. I started thinking about health, then it's the environment, and then it's the animals. It was our first one-on-one -on -one live stream together, and before we knew it, we'd been chatting for over two hours. Along with exploring animal rights topics, part of the goal of the live stream was to try to figure out who I am. I'm not even sure I know who I am. Wait, if I don't know who I am, do I even exist? We covered loads of crucial topics, everything from effective animal advocacy to navigating conflicting ideas within the movement. To help some of these important ideas from being potentially lost in a longer video, I'm going to be carving out what I think were the key parts and releasing them in a series of shorter, hopefully more digestible videos. I carved out the video in a vegan way that is, not where someone was bred, used, or murdered. Be sure to watch till the end for some hilarious bloopers. A massive thank you to Dan for having me on his channel. If you haven't already, be sure to check him out at Grumpy Vegan Grandad and subscribe to his YouTube channel so that you can follow the inspiring animal advocacy work that he does. While you're over on Dan's channel, you may also want to watch our full chat so you can hear the context surrounding these points as this video will be a rapid fire highlight reel. With that, let's get into it. Um, yeah, I, I think for my own outreach, I know I've recently updated, well, maybe six months or a year ago, updated to include dogs as well as other species who aren't typically focused on. Um, because here in Brighton, we have a lot of, you know, dog race tracks. Um, so I think that is a powerful connection because as we're seeing in the comments, it's like you say, I mean, what's the difference between dogs we've gotten to know and these other dogs and I would I would say that for any species of our fellow animals so I think there's yeah. a powerful thing to leverage there uh, because speciesism is so rampant I mean at least if we can focus on a species that at least has some level of respect although I think it's worth noting and this is an example of even dogs are not immune from speciesism so it's a good talking point I think it is and it, it's a good way in because I mean we can all now talk to people and say what do you think of this the breeding beagles to dog lovers and breeding big and then we can go whoa what about the other animals that are getting abused what do you think about you know it's a really good way in um it was interesting also i saw in one of the it looks like maybe a, a demonstration that was happening about about it um the the language death camp because obviously that that's been a big discussion in the movement hasn't it whether or not holocaust the animal holocaust language is is um you know the efficacy of it basically for our advocacy and that is cut you know the death camp language I just find quite interesting because that's obviously language that would be used for humans as well. And maybe that's a, a interesting middle ground where actually it doesn't kind of have the same triggering effect, which, you know, I, I think we should use it anyway, mindfully. But um, I just found that particularly that jumped out at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Death camp here. I mean, I mean, that is just a description of what it is. I mean, you know, it, it is funny how we, how we sort of com conflate things and. But um, yeah, it is a death camp. It is a death camp. You know, mm. it's that's what they're being bred to be killed. That's, that's a big thing from a language perspective, isn't it, lamb? Because so, so so many, um, uh, you know, we have your pork and your beef and all these euphemisms to invisibilize the victim. But lamb, it's like, come on. It's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it, exactly. show, it, show, it shows. It It shows. There's more than just the euphemisms to overcome. I think. Yeah. There's something so, deeper going on there. But that's just a brilliant sandbox. I think the first thing is just kind of letting go of our current language and really looking at it through a, a, a lens to try to challenge ourselves. One of my favorite ways to do that is to, you to flip it to test it. And would we use the same language if we we're talking about a human? Um, and yeah, it's it's just it's a whole Pandora's box to open with language. What's this? <laughs> Sometimes I mess up with my language. E.g., kill two birds with one stone. So hard to break out. A break yeah. when I'm working on it. Um, That's a great yeah. example. Yeah. Because we don't want to be subtly sending the message that we're killing birds, do we? Especially as animal advocates. Um, it, it's not yeah. that obvious because it's so ingrained. I Just this morning, I had to stop myself from saying I was a bit antsy about something. And it's like, 
you know, <laughs> I've got nothing against ants, you know, that they're just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, um, I mean, I personally, I you, usually can't make an omelette without breaking eggs, and um, that's one I use quite a lot, but I find sometimes it, it's, the descriptions help, you know, what you're trying to put across, but again, it, it's, it is trying, I mean, it, do you think there's a line, do you think, do you ever think, that's just a little bit too far, or, you know, um, so generally he's put an alternative, but feed two birds with one one scone. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, well, and that's the thing is I think, you know, as I said before, obviously this is a very serious topic, but I think it's good to have fun with this. You know, your, your example of, you know, um, you know, can't make an omelet without breaking eggs kind of thing is, you know, we could say, um, you know, you can't start an animal sanctuary without liberating a couple of chickens. You know, it's so you can you can you can pivot stuff that actually puts a positive and, and builds respect for our fellow animals versus, you know, reinforcing the status quo, which is typically disrespectful and reinforces their use. On the language thing, I think a real key thing is I think when we're sharing these ideas, like we all have to find our own words that speak to us. So it's not a matter of us telling each other this is better than this and you're wrong. I'm right kind of thing. It's really just sharing ideas and chucking them all to the pot and then we can all choose what works for us. All right, so that's all there is for this clip. Be sure to hit the subscribe. Oh, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notifications so you can be notified when the other clips are released. I also have some other upcoming videos I'm super excited to share with you. Thanks for watching and let's keep evolving our language to build respect for our fellow animals and I'll see you in the next video. Oh God, I've, I've got people shouting me there. <laughs> hope, hopefully that's the two. That's incriminating. <laughs> it's on the internet forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Danny, I've, I've got that wedge of cocaine you asked for. Uh, oh, no. So, let's bring up that the guy whose name shouldn't be. It's like it's like Beetlejuice. Don't say, don't, don't don't say, say three his, times. Don't say three times, but <laughs> let's see if it happens. Let's try it. Let's Roger Yates. Roger Yates. Roger Yates. <laughs> Let's see oh, there he is in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Animal Rights Show, which you... I've said it, Trash Carcass, it's too late. He's going <laughs> to pop up. He's going to pop up. He'd probably pop up behind me somewhere. A few moments later. You seem to be sort of have opposing <laughs> views. <laughs> yes! Check the comments. <laughs> yes! <laughs> he couldn't resist. His ego is way too big. His ego is way too big. <laughs> right, if anybody's any any of my moderators on, please mute mute Roger Yates for three hundred seconds, please. Oh, that's classic. He's, he's behind you. He's behind you. <laughs> for free resources such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.